again, my friends, I'm Coral. This is the third video I've filmed today, um, but this is my TBR for the Reading Rush 2020. The Reading Rush is was formerly known as Booktubeathon, which um, this is my first year on Booktube doing it. Last year I didn't do it, and I had done it a couple years before that, like just on my own, not doing Booktube. Um, so I'm excited to do it on booktube this year. I will leave a um, link to the announcement video in the description box of my video, uh, but this is hosted by Ariel at Ariel Bissette and Raylene, whose uh, YouTube handle is Padfoot and Prongs. Very cute. Um, so this has been going on for a long time, so it's very likely that you've already heard of it, especially if you are a another booktuber, but um, this is a fun challenge and it goes on from the 20th to the 26th of July, so I think that's like the third week in July. The challenges. Let's see, the first one is to read a book with a cover that matches the color of your birthstone. My birthday is this month, my birthstone is ruby, and for that I've picked We Live Inside Your Eyes by Keelan Patrick Burke. I don't know if the cover looks quite as deep red as it does in person. It kind of looks a little bit different on my camera screen, but it has this nice deep red color. Um, so this is a short story collection by Kaylin Patrick Burke because it's a short story collection. Obviously I can't, you know, um, give you a synopsis, but it's been a while since I've read anything by Kaylin Patrick Burke and um, he doesn't, he's never let me down really. So I'm excited to get to this one. Okay, challenge number two is to read a book that starts with the word the. And I like this because it could be like the title or it could be the first page, like the very first word on the very first page. Um, but I took this as um, the in the title. So I choose, I, I choose, I chose The River at Night by Erica Ferenick, Ferenchik? I should have looked it up. I just had one of her books in my haul last month. Ugh. So this is actually why I'm reading that one because I really want to read the other one that I bought called Into the Jungle um, by Erica. But I feel like I need to read this one first. I don't know why because it's not like the sequel, but I don't know. I just feel weird about that. So this is a thriller. It's about um, a group of women who are on kind of like a hiking and rafting trip uh, but something happens and they're separated from their raft and they are like stranded then in the wilderness they happen to see a fire so you know they go to the fire and they find people but something is up with the people and they don't know if they can trust them that's all i know about this it's a thriller so i don't really want to know too much about it obviously but it seems like it's going to be fun i really like stranded in the wilderness stuff and also this is um fairly short so i felt like it would be pretty good for a readathon number three is to read a book inspired by a movie that you've already seen and i don't know if i don't know there wasn't any that really called to me um but i was looking at some of the mangas i owned and i have parasite volume one by hitoshi iwaki uh, this is, this has been adapted into a anime, which I've watched three times. It's one of my favorites. It's kind of like this weird sci-fi horror, um, anime. And, um, it's about this, um, school-age boy, obviously. He's in high school. I mean, like, 90% of the animes out there are like that. Uh, but he wakes up one morning and he has an alien in his hand, an alien that can like morph into whatever. He finds out that there are more people like him, except his parasite's kind of unique because it was supposed to bore into his brain and take over his brain so that it would be in, it would be integrated into his whole body instead of his head. But then he would have lost like himself. It would just be this parasite in his body then, um, instead of himself with this parasite in his hand. Um, so there are others like him, but a little bit different, obviously, 
and they are kind of like murderous and want to eat people. Luckily, he doesn't have that craving because he's still himself with his brain. Um, but his parasite, Miki, kind of helps him navigate how to be a newly parasited person. It's a really good anime though. It should still be on Netflix even. I mean, I watched it like a month ago on Netflix. Okay, number four is to read the first book you touch. And I wasn't really sure how to do this one exactly, but I am going to be taking a trip during part of this um, readathon. So I will be in the car. Um, so I figured maybe, you know, I'm planning on bringing my Kindle. Maybe I could do this challenge on my Kindle. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna scroll a couple pages. Oops. Oh man. I'm gonna scroll a couple pages and um, and then I'm gonna scroll a couple more pages. So maybe you guys will see. I can see that I'm doing something, but I can't read what it is. Am I still on the page? Hopefully, I don't know which one should I pick. This one. What is this book? Oh, cool, okay. This is Van Eater, The Life and Legend of an American Cannibal by Harold Schechter. And um, this is on Kindle Unlimited, which is why I'm gonna do this. Oh, this seems kind of long. Okay, well, I guess that's it. This is the one I'm doing. I should take a picture of it because I have already rented something else from Kindle Unlimited for this reason. Man Eater. So it says, I'll read you the synopsis, it says, in the winter of 1873, a small band of prospectors lost their way in the frozen wilderness of the Colorado Rockies. Months later, when the snow finally melted, only one of them emerged. His name was Alfred G. Packer, though he would soon become infamous throughout the country under a different name, the Maneater. After the butchered remains of his five traveling companions were discovered in a secluded valley by the Gunnison River, Packer vanished for nine years, becoming the West's most wanted man. What followed was a saga of evasion and retribution as the trial of the century worked to extricate fact from myth. And Polly Pry, a once famed pioneering journalist, took on the cause of Packer. Maneater is the definite story of a legendary crime, a gripping tale of unspeakable suffering, and the desperate struggle for survival and fighting to uncover the truth. Okay, this sounds pretty good. Um, I like Harold Schechter, he's a true crime writer. Yeah, and I don't think I've ever heard anything about this story before, which is cool. Number, what number is it? Number five was to read a book completely out of your house, um, which I honestly, if we were not going on this trip, I don't know how I would do that because like, I can't really go anywhere and like, I can't really be outside because it's like 107 fucking degrees outside. Um, so, Luckily, I'm gonna be just like in the car for a while. And um, if I don't get car sick, if I don't get car sick, I'm planning on reading Hell on Mars, which is by Jay-Z Jay Foster and Justin Woodward. Um, this is like an indie book, uh, but it's like a sci-fi horror book. This is the first in a series. It says, Seven months ago, Mars Felicity Station so stopped communicating. The crew of the Perihelion will soon find out why. Something went wrong in the Mars Facility Station. A gate to another reality was open and a mysterious alien plague threatens humanity. After communications with the station are cut, the crew of the Perihelion is sent to find out what happened. Outmatched and unprepared, they're forced to make war on this new enemy and rescue what remains of the survivors. Fans of Doom and Alien will love this. And I am a fan of both. Although Doom scared me too much to play. Um, to play much of, I guess. So, that's what I'm planning for that challenge. Two more challenges left. Uh, let's see. Number six is to read a book in a genre that you've always wanted to read more of. And recently, I've been picking up a lot of really interesting sci-fi books, which is a genre that I kind of just don't give myself time to read very much of. Um, this is The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James, and this is a book that I've had for a while, and it's one of those books where I'm like, I really wanna read that. Like, every time I look at it, I'm like, I should read that soon, and then I just don't. 
Um, but this is like a sci-fi thriller book and this is about this uh, girl. She is the only living person on a space station that is traveling away from Earth. Um, her parents were with her but they've both died somehow. So NASA has sent, um, I don't know why they're sending him, but they've sent somebody else in another spaceship who's supposed to like intercept and stay with her on her ship, I believe. And she's in communication with this person, uh, but as their ship gets closer to her ship, she's not really sure if she can actually trust this person. So it seems good. I've heard a lot of really great things about it. Um, it seems like it's gonna be a quick read too, like the, um, font is kind of big and spaced out. It seems like they're very short chapters and all that. So I think this is, will also be a good one for a readathon. Okay, last but not least is to read a book that takes place on a different continent than where you live. This was a little bit hard um, to find a book that's a good size for a readathon too, because um, obviously like there are some others that I could have read. I know a Cotta Witch takes place on a different continent. I don't know, there are some others. I'm sure like I could read a Ruth Ware book and that would probably take place in the UK, but um, they're bigger books. And so I chose Night Shift by Robin Triggs. This is another one that I've been dying to get to, but I figured I would save it to, for like a winter month, which like I might still, because I don't know if I'll be able to get through seven books in a week. That is a lot, but maybe I'll read this one then I don't know. So this takes place in Antarctica at like a mining base. Um, there is a new crew member uh, and a little, a little after this new crew member joins the crew, this what they think is sabotage on some of the machinery happens. Um, and this leaves them completely isolated. Like they cannot, they, they can no longer contact anybody off of the base. So um, obviously they're very suspicious of this new crew member. And uh, that's all I really know about this. But this really gives me vibes from The Thing, um, which is arguably one of my favorite horror movies, uh, if not my most favorite. So this, you know, being in Antarctica, being isolated, like sabotage to their communications. Um, so I think this is gonna be really fun. This is a horror novel if I didn't already say that. Um, and yeah, it takes place in Antarctica. This is, I don't know, I think this will be a fun one. So those are the seven books that I might read uh, during the reading rush. Um, like I said, I will leave a link to the um, announcement video if that's something you care about watching. And um, otherwise, I guess I'll just see you guys later. So like, take care of yourselves. I hope you're having a good summer. It's kind of a very weird summer. Um, but I will see you guys later. Goodbye.